Well, God bless you. We are in the final lesson of Confessions of a Theomasochist. Uh, this is lesson number 10, and I hope that uh, through the first nine that you've been blessed and benefited uh, through the study. I know that many of the things that we've talked about are challenging. Uh, you may not agree with them, but I hope that as you just think about them and meditate upon them, and as you search the scriptures out, uh, that you will begin to see trials in the way that God sees them, uh, from the beginning to the end, how he uses them to accomplish his great purpose of glorifying himself. I thought about what to talk about this last lesson, and we're going to bring everything into an overview, but I wanted to conclude with probably my favorite Bible verse in the entire Bible. And uh, that Bible verse comes from Philippians chapter 3, verses, verse 7. And in the contemporary English versions, where I just first read it, I know it in a couple versions, but in the CEV, it states, Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I've given up everything else and counted all this garbage. All I want is Christ and to know that I belong to him. In the King James Version, it says, Paul says, Yea, doubtless I count all things lost, uh, to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. And in this passage, the Apostle Paul speaks from his incarceration. And he goes on to say uh, that nothing is as wonderful as knowing Jesus Christ as Lord. That the experience of Jesus Christ, not simply the head knowledge, but the empirical experience of Christ the experience with Christ that transcends anything that you can know, that it is far better than anything. And we need to remember where Paul was at again. He was in prison, but yet he came to a point in his life where he realized that nothing was comparable to knowing this God. And I believe this is the desire uh, that God has for all of us, is to come to a point where we realize that he is the absolute some total of good, and that he should be sought above all else, and that nothing is comparable to knowing him. In Jeremiah 23, 5, uh, God states, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the rich man boast in his riches, or the strong man in his might. But if anybody wants to boast, let him boast in this, that he knoweth me, for I am the Lord. So truly knowing God, it's the greatest satisfaction in life on our half, and it's the ultimate glory of God that we can be most satisfied in Him. And trials are means by which God has ordained us to know Him. Trials are a means by which God has ordained us to know Him. They are a means by which we come to know Him greater. They are a means by which uh, we come to know His faithfulness unto us. We come to know uh, his trustworthiness, and it's also an experiment by which unbelievers and the outside world can come to know him through us. It's very easy to give somebody a gospel tract. Sometimes it's not that easy, but usually it's pretty easy to do it. But it's another thing to be a living gospel tract, that in the midst of your great pain, that you testify that Jesus Christ is sufficient. Uh, it's one thing to preach a sermon. But it's another thing to be a living sermon, a testimony of the very grace of God in your life. And so we need to look forward to our trials. We need to look forward to our difficulties, knowing that God is going to uh, use them. Uh, as it's stated in Isaiah 53, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Again, God wants to accomplish so much in our life. And when I speak of life, I mean not simply this life, but in eternal life. And the ultimate purpose is, as Romans 8.30 tells us, is to be conformed into the image of his son. And therefore, whatever means God chooses to, to do that, we need to embrace. Because Jesus Christ, he experiences a joy at the right hand of God that we can, can't imagine. We can have a taste of, but we can't swallow it in this life. Think about the everlasting fullness of joy that he experiences the absolute euphoria. And I'm using earthly analogies to explain spiritual mysteries. Well, in order to know that unspeakable euphoria 
blissful and blessful state, we must experience some of the same things that our Lord Jesus Christ did. In order to know God fully and more and more richly, uh, we need to, to go into the depths of the very being of God by, exper by experience. Now, remember, uh, well, for me, I, I go to Westminster Seminary, which is one of the most academic seminaries that I know of in, in the country, and so we're real big on scholarship and, and academics and, you know, on the intellect and, and reason and things of that nature. But there comes a point in time where the reason and intellect can only take you so far. It's one thing to know God by books, which is a good thing and a necessary thing, because apart from the Word of God, you can't know God. But then, on a more highly level, it's another thing to know God by experience. By experience. Uh, the Pharisees, they knew God by books, uh, by the letter of the law. But prostitutes and drunkards knew Christ by experience. Uh, this is the way God wants us to know us. To have a true knowledge of him through his word, but also an experiential knowledge by his spirit. Herman Bavink, who was a Dutch theologian, he said that God is imperceptible by the senses. When I first read that... Uh, I kind of was like, you know, is that true? You know, we can't know God by our senses. And I thought about it. He's right. You can't know God by touch. Uh, you can't see God by sight in this life. Uh, you can't hear necessarily. You won't hear the, the, the audible voice of God. Uh, you can't smell him and you can't taste him. But yet, the Bible does say that God desires us to feel after him. The Bible does say, taste and see the Lord's good. The Bible says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it uses these analogies to explain realities that are mysteries. Truly, we can't know God by our five physical senses, but there's a mysterious experience of God in our spirit that while I can say, I know him, it's not in a way that you know other things. It's not in a way you, you know a friend in this life or, or know uh, something that you touch or hear. It's a mysterious experience with God. It's something deeper than just uh, sensorial perception. It's something much deeper than that. It's a spiritual union that God calls us to in himself. And trials are a means by which we come to know God in, in greater ways. So the challenge for us is to seek to know God above all else. And in seeking to know him, to make him known. And the way that this occurs is by the means that God has so ordained and so chosen. And one of the means, not the only means, but one of the means is through trials and through suffering. And if... This is the means by which God calls us to. Let us not run from it. Let us not even stand still. Let us run to it. Jesus walked to his cross. He wasn't carried there. He wasn't constrained to go. He walked to it. He gave life and breath to the same ones who reviled him, who cursed him. He kept the hearts beating of the ones who pierced him. He was willingly sacrificed for our sins. And in love for him and to know him and to make him known, let us willingly embrace, no matter what God brings in our life, for his ultimate glory. And then finally, I know that some of you are going through some trials right now, so I just simply want to pray for you and trust God that uh, he won't put more on you than you can bear. He will provide a way for you to get out of your trials, and that way is himself. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you and praise you. And I thank you for this study, and I pray, Lord, that it will be a blessing and beneficial to many Christians who may be going through difficulties or trials right now. And I pray, Lord, that you would open up our eyes to see your glory in the midst of our trials and that we can embrace them in order to embrace you. God bless. Thank you. Take care. And we trust that God will accomplish his purpose in you, through you, and for you.